Don't forget to grab a copy of In Search of Darkness, the epic documentary celebrating 80s horror. It will only be available till midnight on Halloween. You can find a link below to purchase a copy. Just recently, The Shining made its way to 4K Blu-ray with a new remaster. The Shining is considered today as one of the most important and influential films of the horror genre, and with it being directed by Stanley Kubrick, it's considered one of Warner Brothers' most popular films in their back catalogue. And with the sequel, Doctor Sleep, arriving this Halloween on the big screen, it seems perfectly timed for Warner Brothers to put out a new release to capitalise on the follow-up, despite next year being The Shining's 40th anniversary, being a more appropriate time to push out a remaster for its birthday. With the film's release in May of 1980 in the USA, the movie was a bit of a slow burner at the box office. Produced for $19 million, it eventually turned a profit for Warner Brothers, bringing in nearly $45 million worldwide. Not huge numbers, but this was probably a result of the reviews at the time, as critics weren't particularly kind on it, which seems crazy now considering it's now regarded as an important film of cinema, but back then people felt differently. The New York Times said the supernatural story knows frustratingly little rhyme or reason, and even the film's most startling, horrific images seem overbearing and even irrelevant. Roger Ebert felt he couldn't connect with the characters, and Variety were pretty harsh, saying that Kubrick has teamed up with jumpy Jack Nicholson to destroy all that was so terrifying about Stephen King's bestseller. What surprised me the most was that it didn't receive any nominations at the Oscars or Golden Globes, but got nominated for a Razzie Award for Worst Director and Worst Actress, utter bonkers. Author Stephen King pretty much sided with the critics and was very critical at the time. This is of course common knowledge now and Ready Player One made a point of it as they entered the movie in true last action hero fashion. Stephen King felt Kubrick's film was a poor adaptation but on a positive note said that it had memorable imagery. King was suffering from alcoholism at the time he wrote the novel therefore giving a strong autobiographical element to the story. He was disappointed that these novels' important themes, such as the disintegration of family and the dangers of alcoholism, were less prevalent in the film. King also wasn't keen on the casting of Jack Nicholson, feeling Jack should have been a more everyman, like actors such as John Voight, Michael Moriarty and even Christopher Reeve. Stephen King felt Jack's subsequent descent into madness would be more unnerving with those other actors in mind. I think Christopher Reeve would have been an interesting choice. He in fact played a killer in Death Trap two years later, and showed a lot of anger come Superman 3 when he turns evil, but it's so hard now to think of anyone else to play the character, as Jack Nicholson did such an incredible job with it at the time. Despite critics being less than kind when it was released, over the years and come the late 80s, the movie started to be reappraised when it was shown on TV and made its way to VHS. People looked past its failings at giving Stephen King's work a faithful adaptation, and appreciated what Kubrick was doing with the film, and new audiences adored its visuals, performances and haunting score by Wendy Carlos. Even critics who bashed it initially changed their minds and looked upon it more favourably. The film's plot was not so cut and dry. Many people interpreted the motives of the characters in different ways, and started looking at the reasons why Kubrick did what he did with his adaptation of the novel. There has been endless articles on the many theories behind the movie, and even a documentary called Room 237, which delves deep into the many fan theories. It's a fascinating documentary, but also batshit crazy, as some of the fans go a bit too far with their own theories, but it's interesting nonetheless. The Shining has been treated relatively well with film transfers over the years, with it being a Stanley Kubrick film, there is extra care and attention put upon his catalogue of movies. His releases are never a quick job that you often find with many back catalogue titles from film studios where they put it out quickly with no extra content and just your standard HD transfer. So I've been perfectly happy with my standard Blu-ray for a long time since it came out in 2007, but that was 12 years ago and this is now 4K. This new 35mm scan was supervised by Steven Spielberg and Kubrick's longtime personal assistant Leon Vitale. Now this remaster is not a 100% major improvement, some people may not see much of a difference at first glance. Obviously watching it in 4K you will have an increased resolution, finer detail and deeper colours. As you can see from the comparison pictures, you can see the colours have been reduced in their intensity in some areas and in my opinion seem far more balanced and natural than before. A lot of the exterior shots have had their colours changed for example. The opening shots with Jack travelling to the hotel for his interview seemed a bit washed out in the original Blu-ray and the remaster appears a lot more vivid and one shot has the grass looking totally different. So there has been a major colour shift in areas. Interior sequences seem similar to the original Blu-ray with some finer adjustments here and there. The scenes out in the snow in the previous release had a more scion look. 
the remaster reduces that colour to a more greyish white. The images appear more muted and less intense with its saturation. The remaster has tastefully tweaked it subtly in areas. I've never seen this film projected in 35mm, but with Spielberg involved, for example, he would have wanted it to remain faithful to its original colour grading. The HDR colours appear nicely balanced and skin tones remain natural throughout. I saw no issues of any of the actors looking very orange, which I've seen before on many other 4K titles. The film comes with a new DTS Master Audio Mix, an upgrade over its previous lossless PCM 5.1 track. The film was originally presented in mono during a time when many movies were taking advantage of Dolby Stereo. I'm guessing the cost of encoding the audio in Dolby may have been an issue, or perhaps a creative choice on Kubrick's behalf. This release, like the previous Blu-ray, doesn't include the original mono track, which may disappoint some of the hardcore fans who are desperate to have the original audio in place. 4K discs have so much storage space, I don't see why Warners couldn't have included it for completion's sake. The DTS track is pretty front heavy, with Wendy Carlos' score taking advantage of the surround sound speakers when it kicks in. There are moments when the music appears to be mixed a bit too loud, often being a bit overbearing in areas, especially when there is dialogue. But the majority of the time, when the music's there, it really gives your speakers a good workout and sounds glorious. Her score really adds to the atmosphere and works extremely well by itself, if you ever intend to get the soundtrack. Overall, the remaster of the audio is pretty solid throughout, with clear dialogue. It tries to stay respectful to how it would have sounded at the time, if it so happened to have been given a 70mm 6-track Dolby mix, and doesn't sound like a modernised, beefed-up soundtrack, which can happen to some of these old classics. This new release includes the US extended cut, which is 25 minutes longer than the international version which I'm so used to. I've always known the US version was longer, but never got round to seeing it. It was always on my to-do list, so watching this 4K disc was the first time I got to see it in its longer form. When The Shining was getting ready for release outside of the USA back in 1980, Kubrick used this chance to change the movie quite a bit. The whole plot around Jack's alcohol problems, Jack getting deja vu like he had been to the hotel before, Dick Halloran making his long journey to the hotel, and Tony taking over Danny were all deleted, plus a few extra scenes of dialogue. I quite like seeing these new scenes. The extended interview with the hotel manager, Danny getting a visit from the doctor, and then Wendy discussing Tony when he started communicating with Danny. There was some interesting backstory there to the characters which I much appreciated, but the majority of the other scenes which were welcome did drag the film a little. It did slow its pace down, and with Dick's journey to the hotel being extended, it did reduce its sense of urgency and tension. If you are a fan of The Shining, then this new 4K remaster is certainly worth picking up. The disc sadly doesn't come with any new special features and ports over everything from the previous release, but thankfully Warner Brothers has also provided the same remaster on the regular Blu-ray, so if you haven't upgraded to 4K yet, you can still enjoy this new transfer, but bear in mind you can only get this regular Blu-ray with this 4K release, you can't buy it separately. The Shining is a film I watch probably once a year, I never get bored of it. I always find a little bit I didn't notice before, and with whoever you're watching it with, always creates a fun discussion to try and pick apart some of the scenes. There's always something new to discover, hence why it's being talked about to death and analysed so much over the years. I do plan to cover this film in more depth in future to discuss more of my favourite moments and own theories, but I just want to give you my general thoughts on it for now. In terms of horror and how effective it is, I've never found it particularly scary, even as a young teenager when I first saw it. It's certainly creepy and works well as a haunted house feature. I wouldn't fault it, however, for not being scary for me personally, because its story, despite the changes from the novel, is fantastic. It's wonderfully shot, like all of Kubrick's films. The guy had one of the best eyes in the industry. The performances are superb, with Jack Nicholson being the obvious highlight. Seeing his descent into madness is chilling, but also very amusing at the same time making me think this movie plays out as a dark comedy in places. One of my favourite moments is when he's in the bathroom with Mr Grady and they talk about correcting Jack's family. Nicholson's performance is comical despite the very dark nature of their conversation. What it excels at is its atmosphere that you totally get drawn into. It just oozes so much style and rich visuals and Wendy Carlos' score just complements every scene to really deliver the perfect tone and sense of dread looming over the hotel. It's highly deserving of the praise it gets and a great start to 1980s cinema. It's just a shame the critics gave it a drubbing at the time, but hey, that doesn't matter anymore. It's now considered a masterpiece and a classic.
I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to subscribe to see more retrospectives and commentaries. Also click on the bell to be notified of the latest reviews. If you want access to exclusive videos and to watch my content a few days before it's on YouTube, you can head on over to my Patreon. Thank you very much.